You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Geriatric Paul. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Not geriatric at all, and I am Rob, definitely more geriatric than Paul is. Glad that you are with us, geriatric or not. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're getting a lot of flying in. Hope you're getting better at flying. Hope your business is growing. Have a lot of hopes for you guys. Yeah, we do have a lot of hopes for you. In good news, it looks like, you guys remember the the podcast we did on the ULC proposal to create a novel idea of aerial trespass for drones below 200 feet, meaning everyone who's a drone pilot just couldn't fly below 200 feet. How would you go from <laughs> one to 201? That's a good question, a right? Cylinder that you could go up. Well, the FAA heard that someone who owns a certain company around airspace maps uh, had said that the. Um, <clears throat> let me just read this. OGC which is the Office of General Counsel and the Department of Transportation and the Federal Aviation Administration had concurred to make a statement about a general rule. Um, And frankly, the FAA and DOT said, no, 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 we we didn't say that. And this is a beautiful day for us. Love it. Yeah. So anyway, long story short, uh, the legitimacy of the ULC in their tort law saying that there's aerial trespass pretty much just got shot to the ground. Beautiful. I love Can it. Can we move on? Yeah, let's move on. I don't let's... mean like us now, but no, from no, no. that kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm stoked. All right. So let's get into today's question. Oh, yes. <laughs> you actually took me Rob by surprise. Rob was uh, not ready to move on. <laughs> I wasn't talking about us. Anyways, today's question is brought to you by Drone. Are you looking for a system that can help you make your interactions with your clients more efficient? This is a system that allows drone service providers to put their business on autopilot, put your business on autopilot so you can get back to doing what you love, which is fly, talk to your clients, improve their lives, figure out how you can bring them value and then go bring them that value and not have to worry as much about all the day-to-day stuff. Well, Schedule Drone is working probably day and night on more and more solutions to help you do just that. If you want to learn more about what they're doing to help you do those kinds of things for your business, go to schedudrone.com. You can do a 15-day trial and learn a lot more about what they do by actually getting in there and using it. And then if you decide to move forward and purchase their fantastic product, you can use the code DRONEU, all lowercase, is the coupon code, and you'll save 25% off of the monthly charge. Hey guys, Kyle from Vancouver, Washington here. I love all the content and just getting through the construction mapping course. And my question is about GPCs. Could I just create the plywood GPC, please place my phantom on that and use the phantom's GPS to get my coordinates and elevation? So if I did that, uh, what would my mapping mission accuracy be compared to like using something like arrow points? So yeah, just wanting to figure out if that may be more of a middle ground before I move over to the arrow point. So thank you guys so much. I uh, love the content again. Have a great day. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate it. Another um, multiple question asker, and we do appreciate it very much. Thank you for listening. So it's actually a pretty interesting question. I mean, theoretically, mm. it makes sense because of the GPS units on the actual drone but not so fast, right? Yeah, not so fast. I mean, let's talk about accuracy for a second. There are a lot of different kinds of GPS. There's the GPS in your phone. There's the GPS, the GLONASS GPS that's in your uh, DJI Phantom. There's PPK GPS, RTK GPS, um, a D GPS, and I'm missing a couple. Uh, but anyway, the accuracy of the GPS essentially uh, dictates what level of GPS it is. And there are two different kinds of accuracy. There's horizontal accuracy, meaning your lateral position Mm -hmm. versus your elevation position, you know, because here's the thing, like the earth isn't just this perfect ball, right? You know, it's got ridges and it's kind of like if you were to crunch up a bunch of foil and make it into a ball, that's that's kind of like what the earth looks like. Yeah. And with 
you know, that makes it really difficult to even have a true sea level, right? Because mm -hmm. if it, you understand where I'm going with this. Anyway, long story short, our GPS has a huge difficulty with vertical accuracy. And your phone's vertical accuracy can be off by hundreds of feet. And in fact, with one of the jobs that we did with, uh, with mapping golf courses, we learned just how inaccurate uh, DJI or just regular less than RTK grade GPS can be. And we were off by 675 feet in elevation from the uh, mm. registered topographical map from the city of Dallas. So, Which makes it fairly useless. Yes for, and for, no. For mapping, I guess you should yes say. Yes and no. Yeah, I mean, y yes, for mapping, definitely, because now we're saying that, hey, you know, we, we could be off significantly in, in spaces. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you have to also understand that like your, you know, radio controller remote, there are limitations in how the signal works. And if you've got a big GPS thing right over some, uh, you know, reinforced concrete, you're not going to get a good reading. The higher up you are off the ground, the better the reading. This is why you see those trimbled GPS units that are eight feet in the air on a surveyor's stick. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they get a better reading at eight feet in the air, and then they just correct for being eight feet off the ground. Cool. So I think it's also important to understand, too, that don't be fooled by buying an M600 Pro. Don't be fooled by buying an M210 RTK. Uh, these RTK GPS modules do not actually write the RTK data into the EXIF section of your photos. Thus, it's pretty much useless as far as accuracy is concerned for GPS and the EXIF data for mapping. Hmm. Long story short, the RTK doesn't communicate with the camera. Thus, the camera pictures are not actually accurate to the RTK GPS. The RTK GPS is only for the flight controller and its relative position in the world. It doesn't communicate with the camera. Okay, so now at this point, you still need to use sort of the traditional methods of solid GPS to get your GCP set. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 100%. So I love the thinking of this I mean, question. It's, it's creative. scrappy. I yeah, like it. Exactly. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But it's not going to work. True. It is not going to work. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for a very quick episode of Ask a Drone You today. If you have a question, don't forget, we're looking for business questions. Go to Ask Drone You. Try to stump Rob. Maybe that's what we should call this. Stumping Rob Ooh, 101. Let's hear your business questions. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs> <laughs>